good afternoon i am instructed by my uh, organizers to to cut this talk uh, short so that uh, lots of you know eminent personalities are in the queue and wait you know running out of time so i'm i'm supposed to give a uh, give an overview of indian telecommunication industry uh, what has happened in uh, indian telecommunications industry in 2015 and we have lots of panelists after this uh, you know talk who who can you know talk about in details what is going to happen uh, in 2016 what are the future prospects they see in this industry so so what happened in uh, 2015 i mean on the surface level it for me to me uh, it appeared it's very dull nothing really happened but this industry also showed some uh, you know uh, major seeds that promise that has the promise to you know bear fruit in 2016 governments initiatives like digital india make in india uh, then then uh, you know uh, people have started uh, experiencing 4g high speed broadband uh, and then few other things that this industry or the people of uh, this country on telecoms industry perspective they have seen this in 2015 that we are seeing to bear fruit on uh, 2016 so give a overview what is uh, you know how was india how india stand uh, in 2015 india crossed a billion mark in terms of mobile subscriber usages and and tele density crossed more than 80% though the divide is still there rural and urban urban stands at 150 rural is at uh, 50 and and uh, no and 350 million mobile subscribers mobile internet users out of that half half of them uh, of 350 are on you know broadband uh, network interestingly 90% of them are on mobile network 90% of india's mobile in internet users are on mobile network so what were the trends uh, in, in in 2015 here so few of the trends that expects uh, to to be materialized in 2016 and time beyond are like the customer retention out of 1.3 billion people if we have 100 uh, you know 1 billion connections that means the operators do not have much you know prospective customers to add what they need to do is to retain those customers competition is going to be very tough there are lots of bigger players are waiting to 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 you know spread their wings and once that happens the existing operators the need to return those you know of this uh, 1 billion customers and consolidation when uh, you know many of the industry experts uh, globally as well as india's uh, industry watchers they they always felt that india can't sustain in you know, more than 10 or 12 operators it has the place for four or five operators and we can easily see right now maybe there are five operators going to run their services or offer services from from 2016 and, and onwards maybe one from the psu and or three or four from the private operators but if you talk about if you think about the indian uh, industry telecommunication industry 2015 it didn't see any kind of scam scandal some, uh, and no commotion happened if something has happened or plagued the industry that was call drops that was one issue that industry has felt the every customer has felt and and since the you know mobile com, came to uh, india from 94 no issue has plagued the indian uh, mobile users the way call drops has uh, plagued i mean it it could have varied uh, you know uh, factors uh, and and like you know spectrum uh, on availability or lack of uh, uh, required spectrum uh, shutting down of illegal uh, legal telecom towers policy problems and whatever it be and the industry whether it's the service providers or the uh, you know government agencies they keep blaming each other the problem is still there and and we don't have a solution yet i mean mr bathu ji is here who represents that industry and uh, he might not you know subscribe to that view but i feel until unless the problem is solved i would say we have not put our best efforts whether government has put its efforts blaming on the operators operators have blamed the government policy towers spectrum and lots of other issues but the issue remains the same stand grounded that we have not put our best effort the issue remains the same and we are still facing the call drops and here we are talking about ict is the backbone of uh, you know uh, development of this country imagine if the issue or the problem that we faced for call drops if the same thing happens on our data network the mobile phone you know there is a report that 
we just use our mobile phones for you know for voice communication for just seven you know percent the 93 percent of time we use mobile phone for the voice uh, sorry, data networks or data services and basically you know, broadly we use this mobile phone for just two purposes just two one making voice calls the other is completely data whether it's the you know the, the uh, old age uh, snake game in the nokia phones till the you know uh, you know the video we download from netflix or whatever and if the same thing happens on the data network, 350 million people using uh, mobile uh, broadband or mobile internet, that gets crippled. You can keep blaming uh, who would do first, who will move, take the first initiative, making a collaborative effort with the operators to the, the technology players and the government agencies, we need to solve that. And what, what uh, you know, uh, how, how the 2016 is going to uh, play a role? There was a report recently, I think, uh, by, by uh, Ericsson Mobility Report, that said, by 2018, IoT, Internet of Things devices, would surpass uh, mobile phones. I mean, every device or every appliance that are at, at your homes, whether it's TV, refrigerators, uh, uh, air coolers, conditioners, everything is going to talk to themselves, pass you a message, or without your intervention, they are going to talk to each other. And it need, needs a robust mobile network. And the other thing, mostly I've used the word here or any industry forums are uh, like innovation. Everyone talks about innovation, but really that doesn't happen in a broader level, uh, you know, solving the real life issues. India people, we say, you know, we're very jugard kind of people that we solve our own problems with innovations. But when it's a mass solution providing, it doesn't really happen. We still, you know, wait something to happen. Uh, if not, now we're, we're kindly, you know, the country is like a very uh, reactive kind of people we have. We're not very proactive. Something happens. If there is a fire, then okay, let's do this. We can think five years down the line that how what to do to to prevent that fire. And collaboration in terms, uh, I was I was attending a uh, you know a similar kind of session some uh, uh, a year back. There are four or five telecom operators who are sitting on the dais. I was moderating that session. They got that contract to provide free Wi-Fi, uh, you know, until uh, railway stations or other places. Then they came up that with, you know, the excuse that, or, uh, you know, uh, there is no revenue model for, uh, you know, free Wi-Fi. I mean, the government mandates are to offer 30 minutes of uh, free Wi-Fi. Then we have put so much of money, investment, infrastructure, and everything. Then how do we make our own money? I mean, there are very small and simple uh, innovative ways to, you know, uh, monetize that 30 minutes of. Uh, uh, free Wi-Fi. Just imagine, you know, there is a there is an operator provides uh, uh, free Wi-Fi in railway stations. If that operator could think a little out of the box, or you know, not really needs to be out of the box, it's very simple. If he can offer to the customers who or the uh, travelers uh, going to the railway station, once you listen to that uh, Wi-Fi network, there's a pop-up pop comes on your screen. Would you like to buy a platform ticket? If yes, then, you know, how many? Four, five, six, whatever. You press there. And, and that, that amount can be deducted from your mobile phone through money, uh, wallets or something else. And you don't need to stand in the queue to uh, you know, do that, buy that platform tickets. You, you, you provided that 30 minutes of uh, Wi-Fi free, but you can earn revenue and you can share that with the railways, the network providers, or the technology providers. Similarly, CCD offers or any, you know, Medanta, there is a free Wi-Fi in Medanta Med City or other hospitals. Why can't, why can't CCD offer kind of, you know, if there are people hanging around CCD and using that free Wi-Fi network without uh, consuming anything, CCD or any, any food chain for that matter who provides free Wi-Fi can send a pop-up or message that if you'd like to buy some, you know, uh, uh, cold coffee sitting when, while you're sitting on the park, we can send that word, hand over that to that, that place. While providing the free Wi-Fi, you still can earn some money. If the Rajinder Kar have a green bar, they can send some his uh, you know uh, Munna and uh, Bache to, to to you know serve that customer sitting you know at the next uh, uh, on the car or somewhere. Why can't CCD or the big, bigger chains can do this? I mean, these are the you know global level uh, issues. But if you if you are crying for that 30 minutes of free Wi-Fi, can't uh, you know doesn't doesn't have a revenue model, you can do that. And, and cutting uh, you know, discussion short, or the, my talk, 
I just in the panel discussion, there was uh, someone uh, suggested that it has to be everyone's involvement, whether it's as a citizen, how to make the other person, uh, you know, uh, digitally uh, literate, the agencies, the operators, the service providers, the technologists, and the academia, they have to collaboratively help each other to jump to the next level. Thank you so much.